Hello, and welcome to the Nostalgia Podcast. A podcast where we discuss the retelling or continuation of pop culture favorites as seen through a queer or feminist lens. And Mine. feminist lens. I mean both of them. A queer and Ooh. feminist lens. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Eric Lafibri. And I'm Jessica Tercero. And this week we watch The Witches. The Witches. Boom, boom, boom. So this is one of those instances, we haven't done this yet, where a remake just came out and we're on it. We watched it. It came out yesterday and we did it. (laughs) Yeah. We did it. So we watched the new Robert Zemeckis Witches. So you don't have to. JK, you should watch it ish, maybe. Uh, No, you shouldn't. Don't. I mean, it's fine. (laughs) Go look at the (laughs) Rotten Tomato score and then decide. Yeah. It's okay. It's legit worth it for the Anne Hathaway witch stuff. Cause like, okay. Everything with her, I was like, this is fucking perfect octavia spencer is also fantastic in it like for performances 100 percent. yeah the story is a mess but um anne hathaway as the grand high witch she rips it and like she's the fu- she full hulks out which is amazing she's like throwing shit she does pennywise arms she's fucking cool <laughs> I love it I, I noticed yeah like they allowed the witches or they let the witches be more like witches in this one like the first one there's not a lot of yes. magic or anything it's just like oh cute I have a potion and we also take off our wigs and we're like hideous monsters under all this but like in this one it's like you got to see them fly and do this and do that and it was like I liked that that, yeah, her her like levitating, doing her whole spiel in the in the um the bull room, but as she's like floating down the aisle and like spin floating, doing pink acrobatics around her cohorts, I was like, this is fucking cute. I would yeah, I am I was into all of that part. Her accent was wild and all over the place, but okay, true, and that was <laughs> messy and kind of distracting because her accent was uh. And- I don't know if it wasn't good, but it was a mess. It felt like she took something from like, it's like, where are you from? I'm from everywhere in Europe, somewhere around there. It was like sometimes Russian and then Dutch and then English and this and that. And so it was like, it felt kind of, I don't know, kind of insensitive. I don't know. Just commit to something. It's fine. (laughs) A little bit. Yeah, it felt it felt a little her vocal was really just the so ambiguous i don't know what i'm doing i don't know what this like she made the choice of every choice like you were saying and that was a little distracting but again we'll get more into it but (laughs) um i've never seen well i haven't seen the first the the remake ofs but i've never seen the first one i hadn't either i didn't even know about it actually like i when you were like oh we should do witches i was like Okay, what is that? Is that a thing? Like, <laughs> well, Eric, Eric had mentioned it because he really liked the witches, and I was like, "What is the witches? I don't know this." And then he showed me the clip of Angelica Houston pull, pulling off her forehead and her stopping oh me, like, yes. "Wait, is the door locked?" And they were like, "Yes, the door's locked." She's like, "Perfect," and then just pulls off her face, and I was like, "This looks like something I would love." <laughs> like, well, yeah, yeah, and like the. <laughs> <laughs> the Henson company was like involved too and like a lot of like the puppeteering and all of this like just it was it was so I'm excited to talk about it but um that it was like so charming in a way that I feel like the second one wasn't I don't know we'll, we'll for sure get yes. into it but we watch which is it's a movie y'all I didn't know it's on Netflix you could watch it it's on Netflix and then the new one is on HBO Max yes um Watch the witch. I don't know. I I well. I want to talk about it because there's a lot to talk about with like Roald Dahl and the story and all of that. Um, but truly, the witches. The first one is honestly so fun. It's just like fun and scary and gross in like all of the right <laughs> ways. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean this story's a little silly, but like. Taking away, obviously, some of the problematic aspects that I'll get into as a story in general about the idea and concept of witches, which even more so we could talk about their problematic history and Mm -hmm. culturally how witches came to be. But (laughs) turn off your brain for a second. (laughs) No, don't turn (laughs) off your brain. Keep. Please stay critical. Don't turn off your brain. Especially um, right now was, in 2020. Please. I know. I know. <laughs> that's such a toxic thing to say. I shouldn't have said that. But JK, take it back. Oh, LOL. Um, 
legit watch it because it's fucking fun. The witch stuff and like the rat stuff. It's just the witch stuff and the rat stuff. Wow, so descriptive. Go let's off. Get into Give it. me a let's, Pulitzer. Let's do this. I'm super. Let's ready. do it. Okay. okay, let's go. After his parents are tragically killed, young Luke, not that one, goes to live with his grandmother, who introduces him to the world of witches. Shortly after arriving in his new town, he is confronted by a witch and manages to escape, prompting him and his grandmother to go away on holiday to a nice hotel on the coast, which just so happens to be hosting a convention for the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, which is a front for witches. <laughs> Luke and new friend Bruno get turned into mice after discovering the Grand High Witch's plan to turn all the kids in England into mice. Grandma Helga, being a big sweetie, helps the children steal the mouse potion and in a rat tattooey style kitchen caper, dispense it into dun, 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 the witch's soup. They eat their soup, turn <laughs> into mice, and are chopped, squished, and trampled by the hotel staff. Grandma and Mouse Luke go home. A bunch of cash shows up on their doorstep and... Is that a witch? Yes, but she's good. Luke isn't a mouse in the house anymore. Hooray. Hooray. <laughs> Hooray. We what did a it. happy ending. I know. It's one that Raul Dahl hated. Yeah. He um, hated it. Should we just go so, for it on him? <laughs> sure, let's do it. Okay. So he, Raul Dahl, wrote this. This was based off of a book. Um, he's yeah. the guy that also wrote like Matilda and James and the Giant Peach and stuff like that. So, first of all, I want to say that the book that he wrote was banned because, as explained by the Christian Science Monitor, it was misogynistic in the sense that only women could be witches and men couldn't be witches. So, it was banned because of that, which is yeah. wild. Um, and then it was like an aside of like, oh, yeah, also like witches, like they were evil and ugly. So, whatever. But like their big problem with it was that men can't be witches. What? What? This isn't yeah. for me. <laughs> but yeah. So the, the book and the graphic novel end with Charlie or Luke, depending on which version you're talking about. Um, he stays a mouse and he's happy to be a mouse and everything is fine. And Dahl wanted that to be to be true in the movie, too, in the 1990s version. But Jim Henson was like, oh, I don't know about that. We don't know. So they ended up shooting two different endings for this movie. And then through the test audiences and everything, they decided that it was better with the good ending, which is what Jim Henson wanted. And Raul Dahl was super pissed. And he fucking hated this movie. He hated everything about it because he didn't get his way. Yes, but also just full blown off the bat, Raul Dahl was an anti Semitic man. Um, he Which I opened, had no idea until you told me. Openly and regularly in interviews, especially in his later years, would talk about how much he disliked the Jewish people. Where's the quote? I'm going to. So, this is a quote from him from uh, Culture. Is it Culture Magazine? It's on the BBC as well. Um, he said, there is a trait in the Jewish character that does not provoke animosity. I mean, there's always a reason why anti-anything crops up anywhere. Even a stinker like Hitler didn't just pick them for no reason. Um, so he was just like real cute and oh, open about. God. Yeah, he was just real that's, open and that's very. so bad. It's terrible. And so to me, going. In, so, oh, also, <sighs> this is wild and is going to. I mean. I feel like everything's just gross. But because he wrote Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, that was his story. Um, apparently, what was edited out, but an, so he, his draft of the story, the Oompa Loompas were supposed to be native Africans of short stature who would only scream and be big air quote savages in the Chocolate Factory. What? Yes, originally. And then the editors were like, hey, even back then, they were like, hey, no, so we're actually not going to do that. He's like, fine, Oompa Loompas, and that's the history there, which is also because I know- so fucking gross. I know. So, because there was also an interview that I read, Taika Waititi's um, remaking it, I think, as like a series, and he was talking about Raw Dahl's anti-Semitism, and he is a Jewish person, so he's like, I feel like I'm getting the last laugh where I'm getting to like retell this story in a way that- 
that doesn't feel toxic, that doesn't feel whatever, which to some degree, I argue, write a different story. Why are we going to remake this man? Like, yeah. let's stop giving him money and credit because you're going to have to give him a story by credit. This is technically his story. Like, we don't need to keep doing that. But it like it knowing let this, it die. let it die, truly. But knowing this about him, I'm like, oh, that changes my opinion. Like, it changes my perspective on James and the Giant Peach. And I mean, obviously, Willy Wonka and Charlie and all like that whole IP. Like, it just... It's a fucking mess. And so I also, I know we're like not even talking, we're hardly talking about the movie. I'm just talking about him. But like, because I, re- so I read these articles about him just to like corroborate and make sure like, oh yeah, he, this was a thing. He was open. It was a whatever. Um, so I read like the first several pages of the novel, his wording and phrasing about like how the witches are all among us and they're constantly hiding and they're in every continent and every nation and you can't tell them apart from the regular folk. I'm like, oh, he's talking about Jewish people. Fuck, that sucks. And so like even in the in the in the uh, like the the opening of both of these movies where they're kind of like quoting the book and saying like they look just like anybody else and Ba ba ba, and they wear these, and you can tell by their whatever. And like, it was a little rough because it just knowing that history with him, and then lifting this text into the movies. I was like, this shit is disgusted. Like, this is fucked. This is trash. And then on top of that, this was like a Henson thing, but the level of how the witches have like a larger sense of smell plays to the nose of anti-semitic like that that oh, whole Jesus idea Christ. really and yeah and then there's oh. also like I, it just it was a fucking mess so yeah. raldol sucks fuck. i'm so happy he's dead what a fuck um <laughs> the witches <laughs> uh yeah so and then also if we're gonna go into the lore and history of witches and generalized anti-Semitism at large and how I feel like the world has just always hated Jewish people. I'm just like, this is so gross and trash and I hate people so much. Um, there's also a speculation, well, relative speculation, there's some evidence to it. In a book written by Jensen, he describes how in the year 1215, the Fourth Council of Lateran work hard all Jewish people to identify themselves by wearing what is called a Juden hat, which was a horned skull cap. That style was like a pointy hat with a wide brim because hmm. people of that time hated Jewish people. Whenever they would depict Jewish people in portraits or wherever with that hat, they would draw like, again, big noses and curves and all this shit on their face to be like, they're evil. That hat was tied to Judaism, not to evil, but because of people's hatred and anti-Semitism towards Jewish people, that ha- then became sort of a symbol for witches and evilness. So that pointy, like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, what is Whoa. happening? Isn't that crazy? That's fucking wild. Because there's, there's, gonna, there's, I'm gonna have to read that book. Yeah, there's, there's other, there's. I, so this was like the second article that talks about it. This is Slate, and it was also on the BBC. There's other theories about like um, it has to do with drinking, whatever, like they're there's like not concrete evidence. But this is something that they can say, like, well, this happened. So we're not sure if this is the complete history of this style of hat. But at this point in this period of time, this is when we see like the that witch's hat in these historical etchings and paintings. It's because this is essentially artistic anti-Semitism. <laughs> wild i had no I know. idea like i that know makes me think about like because like you know there were witches and stuff before. i i don't well i don't i don't know history i'm well, not even gonna fucking try yeah. but like i Ugh. i'm not even that's yeah shit it's a lot <laughs> shit it's like it's a lot so raw oh, a fuck man he's and to go what to you were saying about the ending of the first one and how they shot two endings they ended up going with the one that wasn't like the book where he gets turned back into a mouse and how Roald Dahl hated it. I mean, it's largely because in this in the new one, they went closer to what the book was where they indoctrinate these children to commit no, no. mass... Well, I mean... Well- We'll, yeah. we'll get to it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. The spoilers. It's fucking, it's fucking spoilers. weird. And knowing this history, it also makes it even worse. And I'm like, Zemeckis, Guillermo del Toro, you guys, like... 
read an art why are you adding this to them okay well i mean yeah. whatever yeah Woo. yeah <laughs> that new one, there's there's so much to talk about there's also a lot to talk about with this one too like yes. okay so so <laughs> before i knew any of those things that you had told me i was watching this and i was like okay cool are the witches supposed to be feminists like is, because yeah. like they're manipulative, evil, childless, non-nurturing, you know, like all of these things. And so when you think of, especially like back in those days when people thought about feminists, they thought about ugly, bra burning, blah, 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 you yeah. know, like controlling all this other stuff, right? Because like the whole hide in plain sight, look like uh, ordinary women, have jobs, but they spend their time trying to kill kids. And so like you could think of that as like abortion or things like that, right? You know, so yeah, abortion yeah. rights. And like it's so weird because the the film kind of validates their opinion. There's like this moment in the elevator where these these parents are like, "Ugh, kids, yeah, if we didn't have them, you know, whatever." But I mean, we do, so it's fine, you know. But like they're kind of validating the the witches how they're like, "I mean, kids just shouldn't be around. They suck," right? And yeah, then you're yeah, like, yeah. "Okay. What are we doing?" right? But then so they also like hide behind human masks, right? So they like, you know, so underneath their makeup, underneath their extravagance or whatever, they are just these really ugly people, you know. And like, you know, they have no toes, so they don't wear like, I don't know, if there's so many so many times in this one where I found myself questioning to be like, uh, and like their attachment to snakes too, that felt very Eve-like, very manipulative, very like, oh, that yeah. is what they use as like, you know, to try to manipulate in this one, it was like young men, like here, g let me give you the chocolate here, uh, yeah. take this snake, you know, but like, so in this one, it was like hinting, like, but the next one is for sure militant feminists, like, oh, yeah. so I'm excited to get into that. But yeah, it was just... They went out of their way to make them just so manipulative and so trying to tempt them and do all this. So it was just like a little bit rough. <laughs> it was. It was. I will. So I think further that point a little bit. There were levels to it that it did feel like they're trying to paint this idea of this gross woman in such a way where it's like, and they wear sensible shoes because yuck, they don't want to wear a heel for the male gaze. And I'm like, yeah, go the fuck off. Don't wear a heel. Who cares? Like, fuck, who who cared? Like, yes, go witch. We stand. And then um, even later talking about just like the idea of hating children. It just, to me, I know you said like abortion and abortion rights, but to me it was just the idea of autonomy also. Generalized, mm -hmm. obviously, autonomy over oneself in general but the idea to choose not to have children in like outside of that and to want something for yourself right like wanting to not wear these shoes wanting to live without children wanting to make these decisions and being autonomous not not catering to a man or men or the patriarchy and going against all of that and even in in certain instances being considered gross evil manipulative or big air quotes a bitch right like there's that assumption well, yeah. of women and so that to me which is like when angelica houston shows up and she's kind of an asshole i'm kind of like go off like yes <laughs> like i'm kind of really into her being an absolute jerk because i'm like i and again obviously they're witches obviously they're supposed to be the antagonists but in it i was like dude this is like, she's sick. She's just like, no, I don't want that. Yes, I want this. Yes, I'm going to go do this. Thank you. And I'm like, yes. Yeah, and, do it. And this, what I think that this runs into, and so, like, so this is coming off of, like, because this came out, or the book came out in 1983, right? And in the yeah. 1970s, we had, like, Gloria Steinem. We had, like, you know, that revival of the women's movement. So coming out of that, to have this then come out, and... I know I've talked about it on the pod before, but like there's so many times where feminism or women being confident and knowing what they want and knowing what they're doing is portrayed as evil or as yes. bad. Or that's that's like even though like they have some redeeming qualities or or there's like some validity to their arguments. It's like, wait, why are they the villain again? Like in this one, they're trying to kill children. So, of course, that's not good. Right. Yeah. But like but it's still like just 
Yeah, I loved seeing the Grand High Witch. I loved seeing her just like fucking own it and then like everybody dripping like you know she they just all wanted her attention and for me it felt very like because like also like with with those movements and stuff like or with the movement it was like there were those safe spaces where like women would get together and start talking about things like their abortions or like you know um and like that was super liberating because they had never had an, a space to talk about that before you know yeah. and um uh and so it's just like, you know, a bunch of women getting together to talk about killing children, right? Abortion or whatever. Like, yeah, I, I feel truly. like you can draw some clear lines there. But and especially because we've already established that Dull is trash. Um, <laughs> uh, I mean, you yeah. know. Oh, my God. Yes. Um, fuck. I'm like, that's why it's, it's not it's, hard to not be trash. Jesus. It really <sighs> isn't. But the, fa- the fact that the story doubles down on not only generalized hatred towards women and misogyny at large but also anti-semitism i'm just like yeah i you're really just you wrote a whole story about how you hate women and jewish people cool go off like oh my god yeah. but and also- again in the in the same way i'm like in the way that they're being described as negative like i said before it's like yeah that's cool like you think that's gross but i'm like live your life like that's sick Right. Well, and also, like, what are they using to make these women feel hideous or whatever? They're making them deformed. They're making them different. They're making them grotesque and everything, yes, right? So then, and there's so many ways or so, so many times anything that's different or anything that's not considered, like, you know, the general beauty or whatever is deemed ugly and grotesque and gross. I mean, we all have issues now because of that, right? Um, yeah. So that's fucked. And then, like, they also, like, to try to drive this point home, there were a couple of prominent witches that were, like, we're all women, right? And then, like, the majority of the people that were in that room dressed as as women were not. And so, like, at first I was like, oh, fucking cool. And then, like, you know, like, when I first noticed it, and it was like, wait a second, because then they started taking off the wigs and everything, and then they were supposed to be grotesque. So we're now looking at this, and it's like, you know, they're just there because they want them to be grotesque back figures. You know, they want them to yeah. not be feminine, right? So anything that's not particularly or generally feminine on, like, it's such a it's such a gross binary cis view of what is considered beautiful, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, these assuming cis men in wigs playing women are supposed to just be ugly women. And you're like, bored. That's so fucking boring. Like, really? Yeah, like, cool. Jesus Christ. Like, yeah, cool things. I mean, to me, I kind of loved it in the in the idea or overarching, obviously not getting into, I guess, the gender ideology of it, but more so in a sense of like performance drag. I just seeing it as just like really low stakes drag. I was like, this is fun. I love this. Like, yes, these (laughs) these men wearing these bad wigs like this is so fun. But again, that's not the point they're trying to make as a viewer. That was just my thing because drag's cool and all that. But yeah, the point they're trying to make is essentially saying that these men who are dressing like women are not women because they're just they're big air quotes disgusting and horrible and gross and not feminine therefore ugly and therefore not women which again drives home the binary drives home this cisgendered idea of Mm -hmm. existence which is also just like fuck off who cares like ugh, whatever you know yeah it's like at first i was like oh cool 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 cool." and then i thought about why they were there and how they're (laughs) how what their presence was supposed to add to that and then it was like okay i fucking see you i see what you were trying to do and like that's just so harmful to both men women people that you know like anybody that does drag i'm just like okay cool like you're this sucks (laughs) it's it's also just it's just such a it's such a reductive and an oversimplified idea of what it means to not even just from a beauty perspective but what it means to exist right like who cares if the general people find somebody attractive? It's it's belittling the idea of existing in any way that isn't typically cis male or typically cis female. You know, anything outside of or that is typically... gross and toxic. 
are typically cis slender, as is the case with Bruno, who is a walking fat joke that was obsessed with food and his privilege. Okay, so it gets even kid, worse in the second one, but holy yeah, shit. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So this one, okay, so a lot of what we're saying for this film is going to carry over into the next film, and we won't rehash any of that. But what we will do is lay a really good foundation in this one and then talk about how they took away what small amount of nuance was in this film for some of these characters and just threw it at the wall. Um, Because <laughs> he, like, yeah, yeah. he... The whole time he's like just there and he's tempted by food and he's an asshole. Like, my daddy is rich. I, he has two cars, you know. He's eating the ends off of these fucking muffins and putting them back. And like, he keeps saying his parents don't love him because like he's not thin and keep talking about putting him on a diet. And then meanwhile, throughout the whole fucking movie, like even grandma, who's great, tells him like, oh, you need to lay off or like, oh, maybe time for like this. I can't. I, I feel like I should. If I were rewatch this movie, I would have a, a ticker for how many times diet and fat and uh, all of all of these negative things when talking about food or anything were brought up because it was a fucking lot. It was it was at every moment they could possibly throw it in. It was like, oh, why can't you keep up? Oh, because I'm fat. And they're like, <laughs> or like he's breathing and it's like, can you stop breathing? Sorry, I'm fat. Or like. Oh, can yeah. you like just like really like you're gonna call him out on breathing? Like, what the fuck, man? And then like he's trying to climb something, and he's like, Oh, I can't climb it. Why? I'm fat. Or like, oh, I can't think right now because I'm just so hungry. <laughs> and like, what is happening? <laughs> like, yeah, and why? you're like, excuse me. What's the point? Yeah. Yeah, his character, it felt like he was just there <laughs> to be the comic. He was there to be the comic relief and also to make um to make Luke look better, right? Yeah. To give him to give him an opposite. So we were like, oh, Luke is so smart. Luke is so in, uh, he's so brave. He's so this. He's yeah. so which he is all of those things. But we didn't need this other character. We didn't need his whole story to be centered around his weight or his, no. you know. Uh, I I felt like that was just incredibly distasteful, and I can't believe that yeah. they doubled down on it and in the second one. That was really fucked. I legit think they could quadruple down because in this one it was like, okay, let's lay off, like calm it down, like that's not who cares. This is boring, and like also such a boring joke. Like it's just like mm-hmm. simple and talk like just whatever. But in the new one, they absolutely went. In where like every like I feel like every two pages there were three fat jokes like come on like yeah. what is the fucking point why why do why like and then why truly why I I also don't understand why they gave his dad so much screen time in this one you know so the dad yeah. is there and like the mom we only see the mom like side eye like the dad because he's hitting on the grand high witch. Or we see her screaming because there's a fucking rat. Like any any woman in this that's not the grandma or a witch is just made out to be such a scary cat and to be so it's such a fucking bad portrayal of well, everybody. <laughs> to be fully fair though, that's kind of why I loved the movie because there are a lot of women in this movie, and most of them, I would say eighty percent of the women who are in this film are autonomous, are individualistic are not afraid to speak their mind, are not afraid to be rude or be shitty even in the eyes of the patriarchy is what it felt apart. Well, you know what? I'm going to push witch- back on that a little bit yeah. because the I feel like the only, the only two people that, uh, two, two women that did that were the Grand High Witch and Grandma. And the Grandma. You know what? I'm yeah. thinking back on that and yes, you're right. Because all the witches were beholden to the Grand High Witch and they just wanted to please her in a very mm-hmm. like sub subby way. Grand High Witch was the only one who was very outspoken and very just like, I'm doing this. I don't give a shit. Bing, bang, boom. You're dead. Potions for everybody. Let's go kill kids. Who cares? And then the grandma was like, yeah, who fuck her. Like, she sucks. Also, yeah, you're a mouse. I'm on board. You've changed. You're still who you are. And I love you. And let's help. Let's like do this together. And I'm like, you go, grandma. Like, yeah, she was she was she was cool. She was great. I loved her. I like the thing. 
So I know I'm talking a lot of shit on this, but like, <laughs> I really loved this movie. And a same, reason why same. I loved it was because, first of all, um, uh, Angelica Hudson was just fucking wonderful. Um, and she, okay. like, she was saying that this is one of her favorite roles she's ever done. And she has been known to, like, uh, her friends, like, kids were watching Witches, and she was there, and she, like, she got kind of into costume and then she nope. walked out and did the voice and it was just like the kids fucking I, screamed and just ran away would, and she's like, I love scaring children. And I, I was like, fucking go off. <laughs> I would scream. That would, that, what a treat. What a fucking fu- go so off. So Angelica Houston is an absolute full tilt, home run, slay, complete, destroying every, she was so fucking good in this movie. Like, so like, good. Okay, so, I also want to, for all the shit that we are talking, yeah, but this movie was great and I loved it. And okay, Angelica Houston, let's, so good. She's fucking phenomenal. But I know some of the prosthetics were a little toxic and like messy, especially with the idea of like anti-Semitism within the story. However, yeah. The like the the when she's like pulling off her face and she's like is the door locked and she's like yes and she's like perfect and she pulls it off and then she has this like big super expected gaudy witch face and I'm like oh my god it looks so good and then her hands were just like super long and scary and I was like oh my god she looks amazing this is so great <laughs> and then like all of the rat transformations were terrifying like when oh yeah. Um, when Bruno goes in and he's like, where's my six chocolates? I'm here to collect. I'm like, blah, blah, blah. like, I'm a boy. And she's like, she's like counting. Oh my God. Her perfor- her counting down the time was so insidious and scary where she's like, <laughs> come here, come here, little boy. Like, come here right now. What are you doing? Like, I was just like, ugh, ugh. she's so gross and scary. And then when he's turning into <laughs> a mouse and then like the green fog and they have that prosthetic head that was like bobbing up and down. It was like a mouse head on the shoulders. I was just like, what bobbing. It was terrifying and so fucking cool. Like I was so impressed with like the puppetry and like the prosthetics. Um, it was fucking great. Like that was sick. That was so cool. They did cool. such a fucking good job. It was so good. Yeah. Like it was great. I really loved the grandma and the grandson and the relationship. I loved how yeah. it was just like them versus the world. And I uh, like, and I feel like something that you don't really see a lot in movies is you don't see children being believed, and you don't see yes. adults being honest. And we yes. have both of those things, right? And it was just yes. such a beautiful exchange of, you know, things didn't have to be complicated. Things didn't have to be whatever. His parents died, you know? And so she's like, okay, well, I'm here. You know, we're going to get through this together. And whenever he would tell her something, she'd be like, oh, really? You know, she wasn't like, oh, you don't know what you're doing, whatever. Like, she was just yeah. like, oh, okay. And then she's like, also, you need to be careful because this. And he's like, what the fuck? And she's like, I know, I know it's really scary and I know it's terrifying, but like, this this exists you know and so you yeah. see because because she believes him and because she also like allows like she also treats him like a person you know he's just so much more ready to to f- do what he needs to do and to like you know and to be fully immersed and fully aware and like and i feel like that's something that just so many more movies need and like you know like this is a good example of how to be there for children or how to like parent or how to like just like oh my gosh really that happened like listen and like you know don't just like i don't think there's one time in this whole movie where she says i don't believe you or she's like oh yeah. well that's nice you know like i mean she might like she the whole diabetes thing was wild but she like they're like yeah. the only time was when she was like maybe like not feeling well but like you see that they both just take care of her and like it without like either one of them having to ask for help they're just there because they actually listen to what the other person says and are able to yeah. anticipate the needs of the other one you know well, and i'm just 100%, like percent yeah i want this well, also, I, I want in- that on a good level of storytelling, which the other one, the remake does not have, which I want to get into that m- more in the next one. But remember when the nurse is in the house before they go to the hotel and she like faints. And so the nurse is like, now make sure to do this and lay off of sugar because you're pre-diabetic and nothing that whatever. And and then as soon as the nurse leaves, the kid goes to his grandma and is like, 
I don't like that she treats us both like children. And then the grandma's like, yeah, yeah, I know. I don't like that. And to me, from a story perspective, I'm like, fantastic. You're setting up this moment where they can connect on this level where the grandma's treating him just like a peer and a family member and a loved one, not doubting on him, not doubting him in general. And also treating him with respect and not belittling him or or negating a, something he's trying to espouse or, 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 or ignoring him in any way. She's like, yeah, I know. I hate being treated like a kid. I'm not going to treat like a kid either. Sick. And then we see yeah. that idea fully blossom in this way that feels organic. And by the end of it, you're like, yeah, that paid off. It was a setup. That moment set up this idea, this theme. And by the end of it, it pays off. And you're like, yeah, boom. Got it. Love it. Whereas the Zemeckis yeah. movie does not do any of that. There's no... Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, we will get into that. But, like, yeah, yeah I, I like that they're, like, from the get-go, them together, like, and just their motivations behind what they do for each other is never questioned. And it's not like, yeah. this is too dangerous, you can't do this, you're just a kid, you know? Like, there's never a yeah. point like that, but you absolutely know that they are good people, that they care about each other, and that they're willing to do the right thing. And you know that, like, the grandmother, Helga, is like, I love you no matter what, right? And, like, you mm -hmm. know, she helps him through, like, the death of his parents and then through all of this, right? And, like, she literally proves that when he comes to her house as a mouse and says, Grandma, this happened, and she's just like, there's never like, how could you? Why were you there? Blah, 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 blah. No, like there's there's never any conflict between them. And it's just, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Let me help you, you know? Yeah. And I feel like that's that's hardly something we ever get. Like I feel because that's like just such a cheap way to create plot, right? And create like all create this other conflict. stuff. And then yeah. and like a subplot. And then we can resolve that later. And then it's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry too. Like they didn't have to say they didn't have to apologize. And it didn't I didn't feel like I was missing anything. I felt like I actually gained more from them yeah. just actually being people together. And so Aside from Angelica Houston, aside from like, you know, I love Jim Jim Henson and I love like the creature shop and all of this. Aside from that, the wonderful puppetry and everything. I loved this because of them and because of that. Yeah, it was it was a really wonderful relationship and dynamic between the two of them. It was it was just it was nice. And like you said, it was like her believing him, even when he's a mouse, there's, and a, again, it's, it's staying in the moment and it's not adding, applying or, or placing shame on mm -hmm. a shame or blame at all. It's just like, we're in the moment. You're a mouse. I believe you. I'm sorry that happened to you. Like you said, how can I help? What can we do to fix this in some capacity? So it's not like sticking with the past and p placing blame on a past thing. It's acknowledging the present, the future, and then moving forward and trying to figure out the best plan of action, trying to figure out how yeah. to and move on. And what do you want to do? What do you, what do you want to do, do yeah. rather than like, you know, like, okay, this is what we're going to do, you know, and like, oh, no, yeah. this isn't too dangerous. And I, I think like now that I'm thinking about it, I really love that because it reminded me a little bit of what my grandmother has always been to me um, because she's always been that person for me, even though like, you know. Uh, we don't talk all the time or anything like I know at any point I can call her and she will never ask me like, well, what were you doing there or what, you know, like she'll never go down yeah. that path, but she'll always be like, man, that sucks. I hear that. So, yeah, I, I, I did have this. This is great. This and my grandmother is the reason I turned out the way that I did. And um, I love her so much. So this is wonderful. Yay. Oh, maybe this is why I love this. Um <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, grandma was just so willing to say, I don't like, even if she didn't understand, she's like, I don't understand, but I support you, you know? Yeah. And I also, <laughs> I love the, the idea. Cause like at the end, you know, he's the mouse in the house and they're both there and whatever. I, and there's like this giant elaborate, like Lego track with the thing. And then it's like a thing and he goes around and he's like in the little car. Right. So she's like retrofit her house to fit this, like to fit him. Right. And I yeah. love the idea of her, like putting together these Lego cars and this Lego track for like her, uh, for her grandson, like grandma and grandpa, they're like together. Cause like he's smart, right? And he's like really innovative and he is already doing all this stuff. And he's just like, Oh no, you put this one here. Like I can just imagine them engineering this together and her actually having yeah. to do that. And I love that image. 
Well, another, I'm going to do a little timestamp here for when we were talking about the remake. Another bad setup and bad payoff. Like, in this one, it was very clear. We see him in the room with his mice. He set up this elaborate sort of play space for his mice out of duct tape and whatever. Like, anything he can find. And so it's like this elaborate track set. It almost looks like a small Rube Goldberg circus for his mice. We're seeing this, him with his mice. Cool setting it up he's having a good time we love it then at the end he becomes the mouse and so then they create this elaborate set throughout the house where he can do the thing he did for his mice in a very kind and fun way set up pay off boom we love it and the next one no, there's like an erector set in the background and then at the yeah. end they're on like a roller coaster in the house and i'm like no <laughs> that doesn't count you don't get points fuck That's- off yeah, yeah. Lots to say about all of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. I do have something about Miss Irvine. So okay. um the secretary for the Grand High Witch, Miss Irvine, was not in the books at all. Okay. And she literally was just there so that way at the end she could be the good witch and everything is fine yeah. and Luke is turned back into a person. But like I kind of liked her character because, like, <sighs> you see that she is, like, giddy because I felt like she wanted to be with the Grand High Witch, right? Yes. Like, and But I also feel like part of it was, like, she was letting herself be treated like trash because she liked – she because of that, but also because she was close to power and felt like she, yes. like, owned some of that. So I liked that. And I liked that – the reason she sh- survived was because she stood up for herself and quit. Like, yeah. I I thought that that was re- like, that is just such a beat. Like, that is a D line plot in here. It is so subtle. Yeah. But I, I liked that a lot. I loved it, too. And honestly, I was so bummed that they left that plot line out completely. Yeah. It just like. Like this, what what a good, and I mean, obviously, like she was there to then turn him back into a person, which wasn't, it was like a whole separate thing. I didn't but like that, me, actually. I didn't like that he turned back into a person. I loved him being a mouse. Same. Yeah. But for me, like with her there, because whenever Angelica Houston would talk, it would like cut to her and she was like, yes, I'm here, like on board. And that yeah. moment of betrayal when she's walking into the dining hall and Angelica Houston's just like, why are you here? And she's like... Because I'm joining you. She's like, no, you're not. Your work is done. Go wait in the room. And just that moment of betrayal was so good and like <laughs> sad. And you just like, then when she comes back and sees them all turning into mice, she's like, ha. Yeah. And she's I'm like, like, yes. Out. Yeah. She's like, I'm going to go now. I'm like, oh, it's so good. Also, I do want to bring up Ratatouille, the movie. If you're listening, you owe everything to this movie. <laughs> True Lee. <laughs> Ratatouille, if you're listening, the movie, you need, you s- send them money now. Send Jim Henson some money because Truly. that whole, there's like maybe a 15 minute sequence of like him going into the kitchen and trying to poison the, the soup. And it was almost perfectly Ratatouille where he's it like, really was. Th- <laughs> where he jumps on, and he's like trying to control everything, and then he's up there trying. He's like trying to be sneaky and like drum the using thing the in and like and trying thing. to cook using the ladle. Yes, like and then they see him and he's like trying to run under the feet and like all of the close up shots of them like slashing the knife and him like slipping and sliding. It's the same same sequence of Remy trying to escape when they see him in the kitchen. Like I'm wondering who watched the witches and was like at Pixar like. I have an idea. <laughs> also, like, all of those little mouse adventures they have, like, it was just so cute, like, them having to stand off with the cat and then go here. Yeah. And it was just, like, I love that, like, they were obviously high stakes, but they were just, like, little, like, these, like, these little mouse adventures that were so cute and just so clever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it was a very enjoyable movie overall. Like, uh, again, I'd never seen it, Eric said we should watch it and I loved it. I'm so happy he recommended it because it is cute, fun, silly, scary. Again, obviously problematic in many ways, but overall, what an enjoyable movie. I think this was a cute movie and I liked it. Agreed. Me too. (laughs) I'm ready to do the next one and let's burn this shit down. And I'm so excited. Okay, let's talk about this. 
After a fatal car accident leaves him orphaned, Charlie goes to live with his grandmother who helps him with his grief and introduces him to the world of witches. Shortly after arriving in his new town, he is confronted by a witch and manages to escape, prompting him and his grandmother to go away on holiday to a nice hotel on the coast, which just so happens to be hosting a convention for, quotes, the American version of the Royal Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children, which is a front for witches. What? <laughs> Charlie and his new friend, Bruno, get turned into mice after discovering the Grand High Witch's plan to turn all the kids in America into mice. Grandma Helga, being a big sweetie, helps the children steal the mouse potion and in a Ratatouille-style kitchen caper, dispense it into, dun-dun-dun, the witch's soup. They eat the soup, they turn into mice, and they are chopped and squished and trampled by the hotel staff. There's a showdown with the Grand High Witch and Charlie. Charlie wins, turns her into a mouse, and she gets eaten by Hades, her very own kitty cat. Whoa! oh Grandma Whoa. and Mouse Charlie go home and assemble an army of children to mass murder witches worldwide. Hooray? Yeah, it's going to be a Hooray? big, like, a big I... question mark on whatever the fuck this ending what was. What the fuck did they do with this movie? What the Whoa. fuck were they thinking? Well, I'm sure Raul Dahl's stoked in his grave, just like, yes, give me conversation about killing an entire group of people. Love it. Fucking fuck him. And fuck this version of the story. Like, truly. There, um, I mean, there's a lot of moments in it that I like loved and I really enjoyed, but it just, it was, okay. It was okay, a so, poorly written story. There were too many cooks in the kitchen on this one. Uh, you know what this is? This is suffering from like the 2000s rule where if you're remaking something, it has to be darker and grittier and edgier and look yeah. cooler. And like, okay, let's start. Let's talk about how this movie starts. So the last one started with you got to see his parents. You got to like, you know, kind of like live in, with him and his uh, with the with the kid in his life. Right. And then the parents died, and then you're like, oh, shit. This one starts off with him literally, like, literally the first shot is, oh, no, I guess the second shot after, like, mouse camp. Uh, They have him in the fucking car with his parents that has been overturned. So he is in the car with his parents when they both die, and he stayed alive because he wore his fucking seatbelt. And so he's now dealing with grief on like, and they don't just like, so it's like, okay, did that need to happen? Did we need to see this? And then it goes into like, it doesn't just like go to like, okay, a year later and he's okay or whatever. It lets, it sits in his grief, which is like, which I thought was like cool, but also like at the same time, I was like, why are we doing this? Because it didn't feel. It felt like they used that as a catalyst to get him and his grandma to bond rather than like actually having stories. So now they're trauma bonded, right? Well, and yeah, I I would. So I I mean maybe it's just like a pure aesthetic and opinion thing. I kind of liked this version, how they did this with like him in the car. Obviously, it's a car accident. He survived. Like it is the same thing retold in a different way. And I, I would argue that in the first one, they also trauma bonded. Like because there were those moments where like they were sitting and packing something and it was just like he didn't really know what was happening. She's like, yeah, I know. It's like th- there was the implication of like them becoming closer because of this bad thing. Right, you know but what in I mean? this one we spend like 10 minutes on the trauma bonding and then it's yes. like, and then like, <sighs> the other thing too is it's like, okay, he's not eating, he's not doing all this and like, you know, and I, I love the way that she comforted him, right? She comforted him when he needed it and she told him like, hey, look, this sucks. I'm so sorry this happened to you. It's not fair, but like, I don't feel sorry for you. This is, you know, this is hard and I'll be here for you, but you know yeah. so like so i i thought like some of her dialogue there was really good and some of the ways that she got him to be himself again was really good um yeah. but i'm just i'm not sure if that was needed because like we could have done so much more like because then once they go to the hotel like he's super fine and like you know because like it's like nothing ever happened and we don't talk about the parents anymore again like so like literally once they leave which is presumably like what a week later 
he's fine and then he's having fun yeah. and he's doing the whole thing you know and like so i'm like okay like i don't know i to me to me i thought that was a really shitty choice especially when we're now like they now made grandma have like magic of her own but instead of kind of exploring that and allowing her to use it and have it be successful they did the whole shitty thing of like having it be like a mystical blah 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 right which was fucking (sighs) stupid and i i like okay cool like if you're going to show this show it like let her have some agency let like let's go into it like you but like rather than doing that it's just kind of like a mystical thing like why the fuck would you do that well, to that point, it also felt disingenuous because there's this whole idea that she is uh, what we assume is Western Catholic ideology or Christian in this way where she's like, God says this, God is this, God is that, oh, whatever. Yeah. And then that's literally mirrored with her doing some low level of practicing witchcraft. Practicing voodoo. Practicing voodoo, essentially. Mm-hmm. Which is like low level witchcraft. What the fuck even is that? <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I don't. I what? Who cares? She's well, practicing voodoo, no, there's, right? There's... So to me, there's like an op. It's like okay. So who are you? Which are you? Which which person? Like because yeah, sure, we can name multitudes. You can be both things. But she believes so devoutly in this idea of God and God's plan. But I feel like this idea of voodoo is a direct contradiction of that ideology. I was looking into it a little bit, um, not too extensively. I didn't have enough time, but like voodoo isn't just like casting spells and stuff. It's also like you believe in different gods and like a, like different yeah. deity and stuff. It's it is a religion. It's not just you know <laughs> I'm gonna go play magic. You know yeah. Um, so I don't know. Yeah, like her like it was very weird and very messy and. Um, you know, like, I mean, Disney tried to portray it with the shitty Princess and the Frog version, you know, yeah. and I feel like this is just another time where Hollywood just did a complete disservice. Like, why the fuck are you going to do that, Zemeckis? Why? And Del well, Toro? What also, the fuck? Well, well, also, it's like, so going also to the point of like, about how they use that sort of like moment to like jumpstart them into the next thing that wasn't earned, like this idea that like, yeah, he just like a complete turnaround. I, I felt like a lot of the moments in this movie were super unearned because later there's a moment where Charlie says something <laughs> along the lines of like, I'm brave now. Remember when I wasn't brave and now I'm brave and I can do anything and I'm so strong and important and I'm so autonomous and like I'm brave and strong and all this stuff. I'm like, when was that moment? Did you say that? Was that said? Did somebody bring this up apart from the fact that he was so there's a difference between being weak and small and uncourageous and grief. So what we got from this story was grief. We got this moment of grieving, this moment of trauma bonding between him and his grandma. And then later he's like, look how strong I've become. That's an unearned moment because we didn't get any sort of level of weakness from him at any point. So why is he all of a sudden not weak? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that, well, and this, that doesn't make any sense to me. This story tried to do a lot of like... I feel like they felt like they told the whole story, but or or they showed the whole story, but what they really did was tell the story, right? Yes. Because they didn't show a lot of it. And so it's like, wait, okay, so that, all right, fine. Okay, wait, you, you said that you showed this, but like, how far did you go into it? Okay. It just felt, yeah, like so many of these moments were completely unearned and completely like not well thought out. And- like. So, so what it feels like, and I, I had mentioned this earlier in passing, in passing, <laughs> we're not passing at all. <laughs> we're on Zoom. Um, it felt like too many cooks in the kitchen. So the screenplay pie mm-hmm. credits are credited to three people, Robert Zemeckis, Guillermo del Toro, and Kenya Barris, who is a writer. Uh, he wrote uh, Girl's Trip. He's also a writer on Mixed Dish and Blackish, both shows, um, which <laughs> is sick. But I feel like these three very different storytellers are all trying to collaborate in a way to tell this similar story. And I feel like each one of their perspectives trying to carry a very heavy portion of the film ended up making it feel incredibly disjointed and like very haphazard. Like, again, we get these moments of like, this is supposed to be a payoff. It's like, well, where was the setup? Did it get edited out? Was the -hmm. setup in your version, but that version of the story didn't get placed there. So now your payoff 
doesn't have a setup and like vice versa with somebody else's version of this because like the darkness and like the monsterness felt very Guillermo del Toro 100%. The general base storyline and fun cutesiness felt very Zemeckis and a lot of the sort of the like the the grandma grandson relationship felt very Barris. So like you're getting these very it's almost like you're getting three completely different stories mashed together with the costume Mm -hmm. of the witches on top of it you know what i mean yeah and i hadn't even thought about that but that like you you broke that down really perfectly i think because each one of them do do what they do very well but i'm just not sure that it worked for this because i think ultimately what it it did was it made it more distracting and it was so uh, like i don't understand why they decided to make this more edgy and more heavy and like without like really trying to earn anything you know because like i mean they could do heavy but like that also zemeckis doesn't really do heavy you know and he's like also the director and all of this so it's like yeah it felt like this was just a really strange pairing and it didn't work for me at all me neither and i'm reading my notes and i really want to just go right into the girl mouse (laughs) (gasps) <gasps> oh, oh, yeah, because is, I am super pissed about so her. Confusing. So her, why? Okay, so her whole fucking thing was like, oh, look, I'm going to get you a mouse while we're at this hotel. Okay, fucking cool. Here's here's the mouse, whatever. And then girl mouse like gets lost. Charlie is turned into a mouse <laughs> and she goes to save him. And I'm like, all right, fucking cool. So like, you know, and she can talk to you. Cool. Like she she's going to be somebody. This is great. Like, cool. This is and. Then she just, like, she has that one moment of bravery, and then she's just there, and her whole backstory is she's an orphan, and, like, literally, it's just the one line, I'm an orphan, and then after she does her one heroic thing, then she's literally just there to be like, I don't know, maybe this should happen, and on every mission or every, every objective that... Um, Charlie was going out on I was like why the fuck doesn't she go she's clearly super capable like at least to have both of them because there's so many times where you see like he really could have used an extra pair of paws or something you know and but of yeah. course we're not going to have Bruno go because Bruno like don't even we're, we're going to talk about him in a minute but like yeah Daisy like the um, the girl mouse was just the girl mouse and <laughs> like my notes are well- Daisy dot 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 so she exists like because <laughs> that's yeah. it well, well, like you said, there was a one moment of bravery for her, but in the same way that they don't give autonomy apart from this one trope, I, tropic idea of what the character is. So with Bruno, he's fat. With Daisy, she's a girl and she's an orphan. That's it. Because like again, she mentions it kind of a lot. Like it's like, oh, remember yeah. I don't have parents, and remember I'm a girl and I was a child once, but I'm also say it with me an orphan. And you're like. Okay, cool. I don't have what a mom else? And dad. Like, it must be so nice to have yeah. a mom and dad. Like, oh, well, yeah. you don't have. She, a, I, I mean, it's just so nice oh to have somebody God. care about you. Like, yeah, they're talking about oh they're talking God. about going going to Bruno's parents, and she's like, "Oh, those are your parents. Must be nice." And you're like, "Why? Why are we? Why are we doing this? Like, I don't get it. Like, what? 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 And why? Also, why is she there? And also, in my head, as soon as she started talking, I was like, "Okay, Kristen Chenoweth." This is great. I love Kristen Chenoweth. <laughs> when is her music? Because in my head, I was like, well, she's here to sing. Like, she's obviously a good actor. Like, Pushing Daisies, she's fantastic. She's a really good actor. <gasps> Wait, is that her? Pushing, Pushing Daisies? Yeah. <gasps> Pushing Daisies. Wait, I didn't even realize that was her in this. Oh, I love her. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So she's, okay. I mean, I love her a lot. She's obviously yeah. fantastic. But I was fully expecting a song. <laughs> Because I'm like, oh, well, she's a fantastic singer. So I'm like, or like more she, lines than I'm an orphan. I'm an orphan. Yeah, give her something. She and had then I'm five like, five oh. lines and four of them were I'm an orphan. Well, truly, it's like Chris <laughs> Rock being in this movie. I was like, why? Like, not he didn't to like even fucking take need to be work, there. But it felt, it really felt like he was there to come. Because, like, not to be a, like the, the young actor, he was fine. Like, he was, it was very the lead, Charlie. He was like, it was there were moments where like it just go off kid get like do it like we love it it was a little rough so in my head i was like okay so they have the voiceover the guy who's narrating which is charlie as an adult chris rock he's gonna come in with the 
narration acting to sort of ease those sort of to soften those edges a little bit right Mm -hmm. but then they had both of like him talking a lot and then the narration right over it and i'm like wait what is happening so chris rock was so unnecessary in this like it just it was again that i felt like that was somebody else's complete different idea where like it needs to be a narration he has to be in it it has to be they're like okay well then i guess we're gonna compromise and we're gonna go with this like it felt like too many ideas were being thrown at the wall and they all wanted what they wanted. And because they were all big voices with big decisions and big budgets, they were like, I'm not going to yield. Well, I'm also not going to yield. Okay. You know? (laughs) Yeah. And like in, in that same way, like, okay, so we, we've covered, they had the girl who was just a girl. They had the trauma, like, you know, the, okay, like, he was in a car accident and survived, wear your seatbelt, kids, right? And then, like, I didn't understand why they had to be so, like, for a children's movie, like, so heavy-handed on, like, the racism or, like, you know, the pointing out of racism and inequality where, like, you know, uh, like, uh, th- let's just go with the division of labor, right? The people that were doing the hard labor, like, outside picking up the bags or doing this or that were, like, you know, the janitors and stuff were all black people, right? And then there was yeah. the... um, And then, like, having to make it apparent that Luke and Grandma, when they show up, aren't the normal clientele. So they're questioned, like, excuse me, what are you doing here, right? And then, like, yeah. Bruno, like, um, our first introduction to Bruno is Charlie is trying to get into this... um this hall right and so he's like because he's trying to find a place to like hang out with uh his mouse who he doesn't know is a girl yet right and he like bruno comes up and is like what are you doing breaking and entering and i was like yeah fucking jeez like well, jesus ugh. like well i i know that's frustrating but to me i actually liked all of those moments because we're reframing it around this black story and it's very clearly mm-hmm. that so obviously were they in alabama right they're mm-hmm. on the coast of Alabama, I think. So if we're centering it around that, True. obviously, like, these white people are going to be shitty and racist. And, like, even even um, the black folks who work there, w- as soon as they get there, they're going to be like, why are you here? Like, are you okay? Like, this isn't necessarily the safest place for you to be. Like, what's happening? Like, like, okay. Okay. I guess. Okay. Sure. You know what I mean? And so these, these small moments mm-hmm. of, like, racism, both overt, covert, um... I I I I I just wish those elements of because like that whole backstory too with her as a kid. I love the introduction of the girl turning into a chicken. I was like, this is such a cool and fun way to like add this lore of witches who have existed, and it is the Anne Hathaway witch, the Grand High Witch, is the one who was there, and you see her, and it's like, oh wow, like it's happened. Like I love that, but then the tie-in of that very clear perspective and narrative into these other two very big perspectives and narratives felt so disjointed that it just, it didn't align and it didn't feel organic in the way that the first one did. But again, it's to that effect of like, there are elements of this movie that I loved, that I really enjoyed, that I thought were executed well, but the overall implementation of those elements into the story were rough and messy and just not finished right it it felt like it was trying to take on too much in like you know in the ways of and like like i i get what you're saying and like i i understand it's like okay great like i i also like yeah it's like okay strangers are bad don't don't talk to strangers also uh feminism is bad also racism sucks also wear your seatbelt kids also like so in like it it felt like it was trying to say a lot, but not, but it ended up not saying anything at all, in my opinion. Yeah. Like, because it, because no, and everything I, and, and, felt so yeah. disjointed, like, because, like, it felt like these lines don't belong here or, like, they didn't earn this. I loved little moments about this movie but it wasn't because they were connected to anything else it was like grandma gets like hella cash and what does she do she goes and gives fucking every person like a hundred dollar bill essentially right she's like here's some money for you here's some money for you here's some money for you thank you here's some money for you and i was like hell yeah girl like you get that um i wanted (laughs) to talk a little bit about 
I want to talk about the witches, but I first I think I want to talk about what they do to the children. And so in the last movie, um, one of the things that I really loved and that I thought was really interesting was the witches would take the children and put them into paintings. And so then the children would like they would grow up in the painting and you would just see them and they would just be looking out and like, you know, you could see that they're alone and you could see all of this. And I thought that that was terrifying. And I thought that that was really interesting like in something that like i don't know i didn't i didn't really get to unpack but it's like the kids are still seen but they're out of out of touch and they're like still pres- like i it was it was really cool and i or it was a really interesting thing and then in this one it's like oh they turn into animals and i was like okay <laughs> yes so that that was that was one thing i also did miss was that element of adding them to the paintings was so terrifying and watching them grow old in the painting and eventually and disappearing. Fade. The yeah. concept itself was so scary and sad and awful that like for a movie that is kind of a kid's movie with this big hint of like grotesque horror, I was like, that element of existentialism and terror is so great. Yes. So I also miss that in this the remake where I was like, I wish... Because like I, the chicken stuff was cool. I like that element of backstory and in in, as like this movie's version of that idea that like I knew somebody who got caught by the witch, whatever. Um, it was great. And I did I did miss that element in this one a lot. I think that's so much more terrifying. I do like that we got um, uh, grandma's backstory a little bit. I thought that was really cool. Same. But Ooh, I also I do, then it's also I do there's do another qu- thing like. Don't don't be lazy, kids. Don't you know? Because don't lollygag yeah. and like. Oh, okay, <laughs> what were you saying? Well, Anne Hathaway in this, apart from her messy accent, which we've discussed, I loved her. I loved the elements that they that they added, the changes that they made. I thought were pretty cool. The big fucking mouth shit and like the hissing. I was like, yeah. Get te- get terrifying in a different way. Like, I love this weird spin take. I mean, I was less fond of, like, the big toe feet. Like, I thought that that was, like, kind of gross and also a little, like... Did you like We don't the, need this, the, like, ableist bullshit. The weird um, crabby fingers when they... When, and when they clap, it sounds like crabs. Click, 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 Yeah, click. <laughs> I, it was... It was... Yeah, I think I honestly think my 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 favorite moments of her and the witches themselves, well, really just her when she hulks out these elements of just like her levitating like the witch. Oh, my God. Amazing. Like we said earlier, such a cool thing. But then her just grabbing shit and throwing it and like implementing this fear, instilling this fear within the audience of like, oh, she's not not only is she strong in every other way, but physically she can break shit. Like she can throw things. She can she can probably lift this building up if she had to, like effortlessly, right? So like mm-hmm. implementing that by like throwing the stage and throwing the podium and like crushing these things. It's like that's sick. Like I love adding that little element here. And then when Bruno and Charlie and uh what is her name? Dixie? Uh Daisy was her mouse name and she said her Daisy. real name at one point, but She's only referred to by that name like once and I forgot it. <laughs> okay. Well, when when they're all running back through the vent after the big hall change up, whatever, when they're running and she just straight up go- runs to the vent and then her arms just start like cracking in all of these Ooh, weird ways yeah. and extending through the vent in like this disgusting Pennywise way. I was like, that is fucking cool. That is so, I am so into this. I was like, yes, if this movie's <laughs> already a little messy, it just make make the grand high witch the cool like just make her shit cool and cohesive and i'm fine with the movie it's fine so when that's happening it's like <laughs> breaking and chasing them and then her fingers slam into the fan and like it starts cutting off the edges of her fingers i was like this is disgusting and so cool <laughs> i was like i loved it i love that part oh my god i loved it yeah that was really cool i the speaking of uh how they the witches were acting i don't know like so so i know that in the last one i talked about how it felt like they were 
you know, supposed to be feminists. In this one, they are fucking militant feminists, a thousand percent. Like, they march the same. They sit down at the same time. They can't do anything without getting permission. Like, they can't, like breathe without permission from the high witch you know um there's like you know no kids no men no this no blah and i'm just like okay all right cool like i yeah actually really not cool like you know so it's like all the things i was thinking from the first (laughs) one i feel like they just doubled like they they quadrupled down on like yeah like all of my notes from the first one regarding this regarding bruno regarding you know like um all this other stuff it's like they didn't just double down they quadrupled down and they like you know yeah. they had to make it again like edgier bigger louder it was just louder you know in its scope its color its story it's and 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 to, to some of that effect it worked to, some of it worked a lot of it didn't which is why over like overall i know okay. i don't know if we the said the score early bra. but like ugh. The metal bra, come on. Yeah. Like, and I was like, we had to show more of her boobs because fine. Like, this is what, this is a portrait. This is what matriarchy looks like, y'all. You got fucking metal yeah. bras and that's where you keep everything, by the way. You hold everything in your bra. Yeah. And I was like, okay, fine. Yeah. Like, whatever. But like, I don't know. She felt less classy. She felt less tactful. She felt like, she felt like a caricature of Angelica Houston's character. Like, I feel... I feel like she got to do some cool stuff like with flying or with, you know, like being more of a witch. But I feel like I liked her being more sure of herself and more kind of like, yeah, whatever. I don't need you rather than being so militant and so like um, yeah. abusive. Like because like the other one is like verbally abusive. And yeah, she like shot a person. But this one is just like um, she has that like. <laughs> She has that, like, you know, somebody questions her and she just, like, incinerates them or throws a fucking podium at them or does something. Yeah. And it's like, and even when she's like, that's a good question, though. And, but let me tell but you. It's... And I was like, okay, cool. So, like, this is what it looks like when, like, you know, trying to talk to a feminist. <laughs> well, to me, though, because they are technically, like, the villains and she is, like, the big baddie, she's the big bad villain, I kind of like that severity of, like, uh, it was almost like whiplash of like she's she's like fine one minute and then throwing something that, like I liked that they took that idea to the n- next level as it were. I also I just want to I like how you were like yeah sure the last one did she abuse all of her friends and did she kill one of them sure. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know what I, I mean? don't know she like. like she just has this presence, I, I know. you know, and I was just like, and this one, yeah. I feel like uh, there was less of that, like, that kind of fun elegance. But in this one, she just, like, goes from, like, she, like, fucking Kylo Ren out. She, like, goes from zero to, like, 8,000 in, like, 0.25 seconds. But in the same, in the same turn, and I don't know why I keep equating her to Pennywise. Maybe it's the teeth. But in that same, like, sort of. The severe villainy i loved it i loved like the turn on a dime just like soft and composed to erratic and caustic like just like that i was like ooh, yes i mean obviously angelica houston was a full sleigh she was sick completely after performance these are two different versions of the same character yes i am only equating them because they are versions of the same character to me you know what Angelica Houston's was better. I wasn't going to say either one of them was better, but whatever. I thought Angelica <laughs> Houston was sick because she, yeah, she was. Okay, fine. I'll say it. Fine. You're making me say it on the pod. <laughs> whatever, Jess. I guess I have to say it now. Ugh, Angelica I, Houston was you know better what? than Anne we Hathaway. Just, okay. They didn't need to remake this movie is kind of what I'm getting at is like, okay, like, yeah. Why are you going to do it if you're like, if the only things that you're going to like, okay, cool. It's more inclusive. I love that. I love that right off the bat. I love that it's centering. Um, uh, who's the one that plays the grandmother? Octavia Spencer. Yeah. Her, like, I, I love, 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 love her. Right. Great. But what else did you do? <laughs> you, you like, I don't see I mean, any and then- positives that they did. Like, Okay, cool. Like, we talked about Bruno before. Bruno is more of a fat joke in this. Like, he literally can't, as a rat or or as a mouse, he can't talk to his parents because he can't stop eating a cracker. He he can't stop eating, so he can't talk. Yeah. 
All right, yeah. and I'm like, and he won't like. And it's not like he finishes that mouthful and then like says, "Oh, hey, Dad." He keeps fucking stuffing his face like he's uh, he's not able to control yeah. that, right? And uh, well, he his parents uh, leave him in the end, right? He and he was he was a fucking asshole when we first met him, right? And then he becomes a like he becomes a mouse and he's no longer a fucking asshole. He's just fucking hungry all the time. And so it's like, yeah. okay, wait, so what is this character exactly? Okay, fine. His parents, like, don't want him and left, like, whatever. But, like, even more now, this time it was like, uh, even in the final fight, it's like, cheese. Oh, and you're like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, <laughs> it's just, it's so there's a level of like making this m- even more of a family movie in that way where this is one of the most exposition heavy movies I've ever seen. Where it's just like they are doing literally telling, not showing instead of showing, not telling at every fucking moment, whether it's the narrator, narrator, oh my gosh, whether it's the narrator, whether it's every single character, whether it's the uh, Octavia Spencer trying to explain why they have to go and what everything means in one moment to get every piece of information they need to to justify them going to this hotel, whether it's them discussing the room numbers like... I wrote it down. I think I quoted it. It's like, they're in room 666 and we're in room 766, which means room 666 is right below 766, which is where we are right now. And I'm like, (laughs) okay, we get it. That's how hotel, oh my God. Like, also, she's in room 666, like, calm down. Like, really? for real, for real. Like, as much as I love it, as much as I'm like, yeah, Satan, like, go off. As much as I'm into it, Really, like, come on. And then also <laughs> her, like, Octavia Spencer explaining why they're in room 766 on the way to the ho- on the way to the elevator, being like, well, actually, because numerically, six and six. And I was just like, cool, yeah, great. There is another way you could have done that. Like, like, well, audience, let me explain this to you because I'm not talking to my grandson. I'm talking to you, the audience. And I'm like gag so boring it's like those those big moments of exposition and like it just again that it like it felt like just a level of bad writing that i was really not expecting from this movie considering mm-hmm. who was affiliated and just again playing onto the daisy thing i'm an orphan bruno i'm the fat one like okay great we love it like cool. and now we have mouse <laughs> adventures in the end and we all have this little roller coaster and it's so cool okay going back and- to that completely unearned moment um in this movie when he's playing with his my mi- his mouse that he just got there's a scene where like we do a small like a uh, truck forward shot of him sitting in his room there's like a very fun nostalgic erector set um that he has set up like we see the erector logo in the box the the tower he's hardly playing with it and that's the only moment of him building anything for his mouse that we see in the entire movie then at the end they're on a literal fucking roller coaster like a miniature roller coaster for the mice in the house that they're riding and i'm like nope as cool as this is, because I love roller coasters and I love the colors and I love the idea, none of this was earned. You didn't earn this yeah. moment, therefore I'm not into it. Like as as a as a somebody who's watching this movie, like as a, as an audience member, I am very confused as to why this is happening. What really? Like what is this? I feel like they also like just this whole movie. It's 15 minutes longer than the original and they cut out stuff like they cut out all of Bruno's dad. They cut out this and what they added was just 10 minutes of trauma and grief and then just an extra showdown with the Grand High Witch at the end. Like that's it. That's all that they added. And oh, I'm sorry. And then like one of my biggest problems is. Charlie and his grandma find a 
book of all of like which is addresses and stuff like that right and they decide to first of all the fact that they address that he's going to die and uh like you know earlier than he should have um what is it uh i'll be a very old mouse and you'll be a very old grandmother and uh soon after that we'll die together damn okay like we're going like that's in the book right but like yeah yeah fucking yeah. hell like it's like what like five years later and the kid is like the mouse already is like graying and shit like that and grandma looks yeah. a little bit older so they're just you know like okay we're gonna talk about that that's that's what we're doing but like they just they were making an a literal army of children to go and hunt the witches. Like when you were talking about like anti-Semitism and Hitler and all of that, that's the fucking Hitler youth, y'all. Like Which, and straight up, they, Which... he's telling them to kill, to kill. Like and like, okay, it's us or them or whatever or whatever. But I'm like, I have a really, really big problem with the fact that they're going from basement to basement. It feels like to go and have these children start murdering like and rather than doing it themselves if they're gonna do it what the fuck that's that's literally the sandwich bread of this movie we open on the slideshow of Char- charlie talking about what happened to him and what all this stuff and then it ends with and that's why you should go out and kill every single witch you see and all the kids are like yay and then he looks at his grandma and he's like we did a great job and i'm like what yep. the fuck is this because truly how how do you not reflect the author's... It's like that, well, the art, not the artist. Shut the fuck up. Like, you cannot disregard what he means when he writes these stories and what he believes in. Within these stories, it's so overt, it's so clear, it's so... It's textual. It's not even sub. It's just, like, so textual. It's so above the board there boom we see it we're here why now in a 2020 remake of this movie are you going to make that the crux of the plot that is the that is that is this is sandwich bread it's the it's the end cap of the movie for literally no reason like give us a slideshow at the beginning and then be like and that's my story i'm gonna die soon because i'm an old rat now let's go on a road trip and then it's like fun road trip adventure yeah be careful, don't talk to strangers. Boom, easy, done. Nope, we're going to double down on the anti-Semitic rhetoric and just go ahead and, I, I guess, allegorically reference Hitler Youth. How cute. I'm like, who fucking okayed that on this movie? That feels so, like, why? Why, what, and what? Why and how, and what, and why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I just... I, I feel like this is a just another – God, I know that was... I said this before, like in the last two episodes, but they tried to add nuance, and what did they add? Noise. Noise. In, in, because none lo- of this needed to happen. The loudest noise possible, too. Like, I'm an orphan. What? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm fat. <laughs> guys, hold on. Stop. Hey, we need to hey, stop do running. You remember? Do you remember? I'm fat, guys. I'm fat. Like, oh <laughs> do you remember? Like, oh my gosh, is that cheese? Are you gonna eat that? Like, fucking go to bed. Like, that's Wait, so is this, tired. Is, it, is this your mom? Oh, okay, that's so weird because I'm actually an orphan. Like, sh- oh my god, shut up! It like, must stop. be so nice. You're it must so be so lucky. nice to have a mom. You're so lucky. Yeah. Oh so god. there. Okay. If uh, oh my god, I'm not gonna say it again. No, I'm keeping my brain turned on. I enjoyed elements of this movie. There are moments and elements within it that I'm like, yes, the story was also, okay, just big shout out, Daddy Tucci, if you're listening to this. I was wondering I, how long that was going to take you. That took you I, all I know, the way to I didn't the end even of the get podcast. There. Damn. We didn't even talk about it yet. Daddy Tucci, I need you to just, I don't know, text me <laughs> <laughs> something. I just, text me back, I mean, obviously, like... I've had such a crush on like okay so you want to know where it started oh this is such a tangent whatever danny please leave this in easy a i saw easy a and i remember i mean obviously he's done a lot of work before that but he is like i i don't know if that's where like my daddy (laughs) thing started but it might be because i was just like okay i guess this is me now (laughs) like (laughs) thanks stanley tucci (laughs) and so everything he's been in since i've just been like yeah obviously with the exception of the bones because like ugh but 
almost everything where he's like a sweet, heartfelt, kind of gay daddy. I'm just like, oh my God. He's just, he also just keeps getting hotter. I'm like, I need to stop. Anyways, Daddy Tucci, <laughs> hit me up, send me a text. Um, yeah, let's just like chill. <laughs> Anyways, um, sorry to get all messy on Maine, but, um, Stanley Tucci's hot, so there's that, and he's great in this. I mean, and that is what we fine. think of witches 2020. <laughs> that's what we think of witches 2020. <laughs> is that the end? Is this the end of this? Ever? I think that's the end. Okay, cool. I'm gonna hit stop now. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is the end of the podcast. Where this is the end of the podcast. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, yes. Eric, which is 1990. Who was this for? <sighs> Who was it for? Oh my god. Honestly, just whatever. It's for Angelica Houston. That was a vehicle for her to shine. That movie was made for her. That role made her. She killed it she was perfect she was great angelica houston you're amazing and that movie was for you in every way and you were that movie also in every way so thank you i'm gonna say that it was for the children that her friend's children that she scared that is who this was for it was for both of them but but yeah i (laughs) before you said it was for i was like Oh, yeah, it's for those kids. Like, and also for her, because like, I would absolutely fucking do that if I were yeah. like, if I were her and like that scenario happened. Like, oh my God, that would be the fucking best. <laughs> That'd be insane. Oh my God, I would be obsessed. <laughs> oh man. I want, I yeah, want those absolutely. prosthetic hands so, so bad. Like, if I could own those just and like wiggle my fingers at people, like my four <laughs> foot long Angelica Houston in the witch's fingers. Uh, upset. I want them. I want them so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> so good. <sighs> did you like this one? Yes, the nineteen nineties one. I did. I did. I really liked it. I think it's a great movie. Um again, obviously some goofy shit, but like overall a good and fun movie. It is pretty scary. It's like wacky and the prosthetics and props are sick the story is fun mr bean we didn't even talk about mr oh my bean. god <laughs> mr bean right. is in yeah. it what is he i mean i i forget I've the actor's name mr. but bean. the actor who plays mr bean oh me neither i just know he's like a big popular figure wait mr bean who jk um mr bean is in that, it and is that a remake? He, Hold on, I'm gonna... mr bean <gasps> are we doing mr bean next oh no oh it was a tv show and then Ooh. okay sorry well Mid tangent either way mr bean was in it um i it's it's a great movie like truly if you haven't seen it i've literally never heard of it until recently and i'm so happy I, we watched it because like what a sweet little halloween treat you know yeah i i think that this is really fun i loved this i am a huge sucker for jim henson and like a lot of his creations and uh, all of the work that they do at uh, the creature shop. And I'm like, even like rewatching Farscape because like his son, like did all of the puppets oh, for, or he did that. Okay. And it was like a whole big thing. Um, I think that's why he sold uh, the, like the Henson company to Disney. Cause he wanted money to make that. Uh, anyways, but like, I love puppets. I love, um, Same. I don't know. This was just so, it was so good. It was so cute. And it like, it just, it was everything. Okay. I'm going to take back who this is for. This is, this is for kids. This is for kids that need to like be believed and hear that it's okay. This is for every kid that didn't have like a grandma like that growing up, you know, and, or like just a person in that, like in their life, like, man, how cool to like be able to sit there and be like, yeah, I believe you. Let's do this. And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I felt so lovely after watching it. Like, even though, yeah, like, sure, there's a couple of hiccups, but like, overall, just, it was such a good story. It was, it was. so good. It was so I, sweet. I want to add a little fun moment. So you saying this is for every kid um, reminded me of the intro to The Little Things by Good Charlotte. 
<laughs> this is for every kid who never got picked for gym class. Oh, who got picked yeah. last for gym class? This song is dedicated is good to every kid who ever got picked last in I'm gym saying. class. This-, this is for every kid who never had no date to school dance. To every kid who never had a date to no school dance. This is for you. Oh my god, it's silly. But it was simply the line, and you said it with the cadence of that. And in my head, I was like, "Is she gonna quote Good Charlotte right now?" <laughs> I don't think I, like, I know oh that god. song. It's it's a goofy song. Good Charlotte's a goofy band, and it's they a goofy are. I know song the one by song. a goofy band. Anyways, well, let's get back it. to this movie. So, Eric, <laughs> uh, yes, what did you think of Witches twenty twenty? Who is it for? So I don't know who it was for. Like truly, it was all over the place. Um, so I re- I have no idea. I don't have an answer and that's my answer because it was so disjointed and confusing and I mean it was just it was messy. It was messy. Um is it new, interesting or the same, progressive, regressive? How has the story evolved with today's ideals? It was relative I guess it was like relatively new <sighs> Okay, so the element of Octavia Spencer and her grandson and a more Black-centered voice as the narrative hero here, I loved it. I wanted more of that, and I'm like, yeah, if we're going to do this, let's do it. But again, that story gets drowned out by the elements of Toro and the elements of Zemeckis, like, well, Del Toro, sorry, and the elements of Zemeckis. And because of that, it just like, got muddied so there's elements sure that i thought were new and interesting um i think generally i guess it was regressive just because like it made a decent story worse i don't know what do you think i felt like it was both new and the same but i can't say that it was really interesting um yeah it was new in the sense that okay they were following the book a little bit closer um they added a girl like that was there for like a scene they they did the the different ending or whatever but i think that it was regressive and i think because because of the ways in which like it just had to be new and edgy so now the witches are going to be more militant and now we're going to have like this movie feels like a caricature of the first one but not in like a funny fun goofy way it i don't know it yeah, it just feels like a bad caricature of like it had to be a little bit darker. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like it evolved with anything. I think it was just kind of like I think it didn't know what it wanted to be or what it wanted to do. Yeah, I agree. It was again, it was just it, it had no direction. It had no directive and it was messy. And it wasn't different enough to be it to be its own thing either. No. Like yeah, yeah. looking at the Grinch, right? Those are all different. You know, looking at some of the other movies that we've covered, but like this is basically this is basically Frankenweenie, but like just a little bit yeah. darker. <laughs> you yeah, know? I mean, kind of. <laughs> so, oh I mean, my God. it's fine. Um, let's see. Who is this for? I think that. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I think this was for the studios. I think this was like, ooh, wouldn't this be cool if we did this again? Like, oh yeah, we can like all yeah. do this together. It'd be so cute. This was like, um, this was a boys' weekend. This was like a a retreat that they all went to, where they, yeah, <laughs> they wrote this in like a weekend. Yeah, I mean, truly, that's what it felt like. It was, uh, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's forgettable. It's fine. It's forgettable. Very forgettable. Yeah. Um. Did you like it? You know what. I still enjoyed it. <laughs> no. Okay, sorry. I'm burping on the pod. Oh, crazy gross. Um, there are elements of it that I really enjoyed. Overall, it was a mess. A mess mess. Uh, but I still I still enjoyed my time. Would I watch it again? Nah. No. I don't think it's worth watching again. The first one, 100%. I would watch again because the first one was great and rewatchable. This one, not so much. Yeah, I feel the same. It was like fine, like I laughed at a few parts and but like, uh, and like some of the stuff was cool, like but like overall, it was missing out on a lot of the charm that needed to be there. I think for for the story, I yeah. don't know. It, it felt it felt too messy to rewatch again. I'm not gonna watch it again. 
Yeah. If just all you guys can just like YouTube the um all the Anne Hathaway parts or like you know where like she's uh like getting like pissed and like uh throwing shit at people. Just YouTube that. That's fine. And then that's like the movie. <laughs> that's it. And you got it. Yeah. That you, <laughs> you you've got, got you've you've got the basic. Part. I mean, obviously, shout out to Octavia Spencer because she does a great job in this. But it is it is a messy movie. I don't need to rewatch it. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes so, gave it a 47%. So. I think that's y'all. pretty fair. That's pretty that fair. That is fair. That's, that's what it feels like. Yeah. It was effort, but not good. <laughs> <laughs> there was some effort for sure. <laughs> People tried. People um, tried. I know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think that's it. I don't know. Is there anything else you have to say about these movies? No, I mean, again, uh, Daddy Tucci, if you're listening, go ahead and hit me up. But apart from that, no, I'm actually good. Do you have anything else <laughs> to le- le- left to say? Um, I don't. But if you have something to say, then you can write us at nostalgiapodcast at gmail.com. Did you like that segue? That was so good. I did. No, oh I loved God. it. I, I was obsessed. Dang. Um, thank you to Danny Barkley for editing our podcast. And thank you, Eric. Thank you, Jess. I love doing this with you. There's our song. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, that was a song. All we right. Did well, it. thank you for listening. We love you so much. And remember, stay cute. And stay critical. Bye. Bye-bye. See you later. Alligator. Bye-bye. <laughs>